Mission restart in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Welcome back. Alright, so, let's get back into the game. Uh, everything's good. So, again, when we left off, uh, we have to place uh, another comically large engine into orbit. And in doing so is going to get us a large amount of monies. Monies that we're going to use to upgrade the uh, science and research station. Or center, rather. So, let's do this. Um, dun -dun. None of these are going to work. So, before we staged this normally, we had a large engine, but we put it at the end of, you know, we just gave it a large engine with a minimal amount of fuel, and we put a bunch of rockets under there, and the rockets underneath was, was got it in the orbit, and then we just staged normally. I think with something this big, we're going to do a little trick. We, as soon as, I don't think this is actually big enough, but it, it's a start. No, it is big enough. How much Delta V? That gives us... Well, it actually gives us a spring on a large amount. So what we're going to do, we're going to get this in the orbit, and we're going to do a little trick to be able to... We're going to just restage the rocket, and then stage it again, so that it fulfills the requirement of uh, activating it through the normal staging process. So we are going to keep that. What happens if we add more fuel? We do not have fuel of that size. We don't have any tanks of that size available to us. Yes, we do. Uh, they all cost money, but... We already got a sizable, like, we're, we're back up to half a million just on the advance on this mission. So what happens there? That should be plenty enough to get us in the orbit. And back, by itself. So, we are going to utility, that's right, the uh, parachutes are buried in there right now. This is going to take a lot of radials, I think, to land well. I don't think a 6 will do it, but let's see if it will. Stage these right, and go into stage recovery. What's the analysis? 7.5, not horrible. We can do better. And we've got plenty of parts to play with now. What's that give us? We're going to add go from 6 to 8. 6.6. .6, much better. Much better. Uh, we'll even add a couple of stability enhancers. A couple of stability enhancers. Let's turn it down there. There we go. We should have everything we need for this launch. Um, before I launch this, we'll just say clown sized mark two. Uh, I just want to take a, a quick peek back in the contracts to see if there's anything else we could do while we're in orbit. Oh, I'm flight over Kerbin. Flight Orbiter, nope. Visual surveys, nope. Nope. <laughs> uh, we could try to rescue Sunfell, but. Nah, let's let's not do that. That's 
way too much rocket. Uh, in fact, I actually want to do one more thing here to that rocket. Test liquid fuel out of the LV-1. Which one's the LV-1? There's not exactly a whole lot of room on the current rocket. LV-1... No, it's going to be one of the... Yeah, we don't have the LV-1 as I thought. We won't do that in this launch. This is good enough. So, let us... Let's just launch it. Let's do this. And oh, we don't need that up. But there are satellites. Slaving away. Okay, again, we want to get a orbit of between basically 79 and 93, which is pretty generous. SAS on. Uh, what is our thrust to weight? So it is 3.27 normally, so we're going to keep this at about half throttle, at least while we're in the atmosphere. Probably the entire way in. So, three, two, one, space! Yep. Looking good. We're on our way. Look at those pretty blue flames. Get a little purple towards the end. So, this is just going to be a standard orbit. We're going to ride this up to about 10k, start our gravity turn, which is not really a gravity turn, but we're going to start turning in the direction of gravity. And then when our APO hits about 50k, we will nose it down even further. Really? For attaching such a large engine to a small command pod, this should be one of our smooth launches. Should be. Oh god, I didn't hit F5. Will I revert? But Let's start our turn. We find the green mark. Wave hi to our Kerbal buddies down below. Let's switch this to orbit. Apo at 47, 8, 9. There we go. And let's point it down a little bit. And we're just going to gently arc it. We'll take this to 80. 81. We'll go to 81 because it's the atmosphere is still dragging us down. We might actually need another boost after this, we'll have to see. Let's give it a little bit of a kick. You can't see, but it's at bare minimum. There we go. Just because the atmosphere is still slowing us down and dragging down the apple. There we go! Patch conics. Maneuver nodes! Yay! Okay, so this gives us the ability to show off precise node, if you're not familiar. It doesn't really... Oh, and now we've got atmospheric entry, too. So, go over that a little bit more detail. Right now, we need to circularize this puppy. We're going to keep dragging this until we're basically side by side. 82, 80, good enough. Jeb is not quite smart enough yet to be able to point to our maneuver node, but we've got so little torque in this little command pod compared to this. I don't 
really want to trust Jeb to this anyways. Not yet. Okay, thanks to Flight Engineer, we know the time to the node and the time to node burn, which is basically the time to the node minus half of the burn time. And that's so because ideally we want to get spend all of our delta v in the very moment we hit our maneuver node, but that's not physically possible. It takes it's going to take a ten and a half second burn, so we want half of that ten and a half seconds to be uh, before the node, and then half after. So it averages, and then there we go, full throttle. There it is. Help, just keep that right on the blue. Don't want to pay too attention. There we go. Right. Wait a little longer. Uh, but again, this is not the exact science. They gave us some pretty loose requirements. So, we have to activate our one and only rock uh, engine through the staging when we've already staged it. So, what we're going to do. We're going to add a new stage. Stage after that, and then we're going to stage again. Test complete. Monies! <laughs> 1.5, well almost 1.5 million. And we've got 285 meters per second left in the tank. Perfect. I should love it when a plan comes together. So, let's burn basically all of that Delta V left, because we don't want fuel to be left in the tank here. That's just added weight. It means our parachutes are less effective, that means we get less of a rebate back. There's not much left in the tank, but might as well get every last drop. 285. Two, two. There we go. That's pretty much exactly where we want. So, for those of you unfamiliar with, uh, what is the exact name of this? Yada, yada, yada. What? Trajectories. Uh, you can find it by going to Google and do KSP Atmospheric Trajectory or just the Trajectories mod from KSP. So, this maneuver node obviously takes us close. You can't really see because of the orange line. So, you can see the orange line, which is our projected path from our maneuver. And then when it hits here, where the red starts, it's going to hit the atmosphere. And you can kind of see that this dotted line continues, continuing to go in an arc, but this red line stops much closer. Uh, that's because it's taking atmospheric drag into effect. It's not perfect. It assumes that you're entering the atmosphere prograde, and normally you're going to do retro, but it's usually pretty accurate. So it shows you your path with atmospheric drag included. And the other part is this red cross here. That red cross is pretty important. We're going to drag that over until it's just over. There we go. Until it's just over the space center. That cross shows you where this location, where this red line ends, is going to show you where that ends after the rotation of the planet is taken into effect. So as we orbit around the planet and engage our maneuver node and travel for the atmosphere, the planet will have 
gone about that far in its daily rotation. So that cross is this point and then drag back to show you how far the planet will rotate. So it's really this red cross that you're trying to match up as you're landing. Uh, another quick thing we show off if you haven't uh, played with yet, Kerbal Alarm Clock. Very useful to have, especially if you have things like life support where uh, you don't want to forget things for too long because they just sit out in the space and then Whoops, bring out oxygen due to negligence. That's a pretty sucky way to lose your herbal. So we're going to add a new alarm. Uh, we have a maneuver with no plan, so it's already got that pre-selected. There's other ways that you can reference your alarm. You can just say, set amount of time. Uh, when you get to your Apple or Perry, your sending node, sending node. SOI change, transfer window, Kerbal group, blah blah blah. Lots of things. Uh, we're going to set this to the maneuver node and we're going to give us a one minute margin. It's going to stop us one minute before we're supposed to get to our maneuver node. And that's pretty good for default for this. We're going to add alarm. Uh, and by default, so we're just going to hit time warp maximum we can. And I'm stepping away from the controls. Turn off newer node. So what this is going to do, and you can see the alarm up here in the lower left, counting down. And as it get closer to zero, it's going to warp us down. And then once we hit it exactly, it's going to stop give us a message, say our time warp is halted. We're just going to delete on close. So alright, because we gave us one minute margin, we have one minute to get this pointed in the correct direction. Plenty of time. It's going to be a two second burn because that's all the fuel we have. And thankfully the torque from the command pod is just enough, so we don't have to spend any fuel burning our engine's light to get the gimbling. Excuse me. So, gonna wait nine more seconds. And then I'm going to mash the Z key. One. Hit the Z key, didn't even have to hit anything else. Although we do have to do one more thing, which actually might throw this off a little bit, but that's okay. The engine I kind of want to put into the ocean just because it's a softer landing, just the command pod, not so much. So we're going to separate. <laughs> Those uh, parachutes were activated at the same time as ejection, but it shouldn't matter. Um, if this stage stays in the physics range, like I said, the parachutes have already been activated, and in the weird way uh, Kerbal Space Program still handles atmospheric reentry, those chutes are just going to open up on their own and not care that it's still whizzing through the air at 800 miles per hour and then softly come to a landing. That gets outside of physics range, that's when uh, stage recovery comes into play and it will calculate like, okay, this is the weight of the, the engine and the tanks and whatever is attached to it. Here's the weight of the fuel, which is zero because we specifically made it a point to burn through all of our fuel, so no added fuel there. And this is how many parachutes there is, so it's going to calculate how fast it's going to be when it starts landing and then it's going to give us a refund based on that. Now we are landing very close, if not on top of the... Well, we don't want to land on top of the Space Center. But we're going to land close, so it's going to get a high percentage back from distance, and it should be underneath 7 meters a second when it hits, which means we should get uh, very close to maximum 
refund on that. So we're going to get a lot back on that very large and expensive engine. It is dutifully flying away. We are, oops. That torque. So let's, uh, we didn't get to see this last time. Jeb's kind of freaking out a little bit. There we go. So I really want to see if, because uh, we didn't get to see it last episode, if the mod that for, uh, was it Kerbal Quake, I believe it's called, should shake the cockpit as we hit the atmosphere. It's just a minor thing, but uh, it's great for immersion. I really want to see if it works. We are well away from the engine. Let's warp ahead a little bit. Right up until we hit the soup. You can see there is the KSP. The KSC, rather. Nice gentle glide through the atmosphere. change yet. We'll see if it starts shaking once we hit atmosphere. I'm not completely sure if this mod is... Oh, we don't want to go there. And we should start seeing re entry effects right there. There we go. Caps will be a shaking. Not exactly the best view, but you probably don't want to see what's going on back there anyways. We're actually pointing it backwards from here. Altitude at 20,000 meters and falling. We're just going to let the atmosphere point us in the direction we want to go. The uh, heat shield is sloped so that it should be self-correcting. Quick check outside. Uh, not that one. Oh, see, all right. There we go. Our engine has... Ooh, that might land on land. Us being smaller and less uh, air resistance have shot right by it. We have gotten through the worst up of the atmosphere. So the shaking is now down to a minimum. Yes, it's going to land on land, but that's okay. This should be plenty spell, uh, slow enough. We're actually going to land on land too. Again, that's fine. Gotta take it down to. 3k. Close enough. Shoot away. So it's not going to unload physics. Because it never got past 1.4 kilometers, but that's okay. There it goes, and the shoot should happen right now. Right now. There we go. Time warp a little bit. We should both come down. A safe, perfect landing. And then we've got some money to spend. I cut it back down to normal speed just before we land, just to make sure that there isn't any. Look at that! That throws off the green screen. Perfect! It's even upright. Oh, couldn't even plan that any better. So let's recover this vessel and we'll go back into the tracking station, recover the pod. Which should be right over there. Recover. Welcome back, Jeb. All right. 
We've got almost 1.5 million. We're going to spend that how? We're going to spend that right now on the research and development. There we go. Bigger facility. And we've got so over 6,000 science to spend. Uh, so we can probably just march through this entire tier. But, in the interest of at least checking out what we have. Alright, so advanced exploration gives us the ladders, which, yeah, okay, that's great. Barometer, which is another source of science. Scan the Meltry Spectral Scanner is like the scanner we put on our previous satellites, but higher resolution and will give us uh, biome information. Which is good. So I, that might actually be what unlocks uh, resource scanning from our scan satellites. So we're going to research that for sure. Uh, photovoltaic panels. Yeah, we are going to get those. And a couple more experiments for a station that we have not built yet. But I have a feeling we're going to do very soon. Maybe even next. Depends on what we, if we're going to do that first or the moon first. Um, fuel tanks, another Probodon core. These are good. We'll leave that alone for just a second. We'll probably come back to it. Uh, anchor, that is kind of uh, handy when you get to the uh, when you start playing around with Kerbal Attachment System. Not the most exciting, but we do have the Advanced Reaction Wheel Large and the Mark. 1 2 command bot. Hold the maximum of 3 crew. That is going to help our uh, training immensely. And the lander can. That could be for the moon. And some other goodies. Definitely going to get that. Uh, let's see. We got the basic jet engine. This does not have the basic, but it still has our Mark 2 parts. Let's get that. Actuators. These... Okay, so we got the claw. These are attachments for the colonization system. We are going to want those eventually. We do not have to pick it up right now. We'll probably come back. So specialized construction. Some girders. Our docking ports. Very good, and a mess of both uh, Kerbal colon uh, yeah. colonization system and orbital. So both of those are important for science and stations. And that is really the name of what we want to get into. Heavier rocketry. This gives us our mainsail, our jumbo fuel tank, and the LB, uh, LFB KR1 times 2, which we just flew. Uh, yeah, we'll want some heavy engines. So we spent it on those, and we still got over 5,000 to spend. We are looking good. Uh, let's see. What I'm looking for right now is the turbo engine, which is not here. I suspect we need to... There we go. Turbojet engine. That is really going to unlock a lot of things for us in the space play. Oh. Cannot research technologies. Okay, so this is our next hard limit for the science station. That's okay. That just lets us know what we can spend on right now. Launch escape system. Who's going to want that? Cupola. We are going to want that. Mostly because it's going to look nice on our stations. And that's what we're building towards. Nab that. Uh, large electronics. Uh, yeah, we're going to get Regular electronics unlocks a antenna, seismic accelerometer. That's another source of science. And these are from TAC Life, a 
of support. These get us our recyclers, which let us reuse. So as you use water and it turns into wastewater, or it you take oxygen and turn it into carbon dioxide, these will take that waste material and turn it back into something useful. Uh, for small craft, probably not everything you need. I mean, it's probably excessive, but for like stations and things that are l much more longer term, uh, inner planetary expeditions, these come in useful. So you don't have to take all the resources you need for tripping back. You can take a smaller amount and just reuse them if you do it right. So we're going to take that. Field science. Uh, camera. Another scanner. Scanner that helps with uh, another one from ScanSat. This one helps with landmarks, which is kind of useful, but not the most for what we're looking for. Uh, let's go back. Yeah, advanced aerodynamics. More Mark II parts. Nabbing that. Nuclear propulsion. So it gives us our nukes and some more scanners. So this is another resource scanner, which uh, scans for carb. Borundium? Carborundium. There we go. Which is kind of a more enhanced version of carbonite, which is the more basic resource that we've added. Gabraham! Welcome! What is this, a technology tree? I thought KSP was just slapping components in the spaceship and sandbox. Yes, that's how the weak ones do it. We are not weak. We are strong like bull. So... Nuclear propulsion gets us our nukes. Everyone likes nukes, maybe a little too much, but they're still very useful. Also gives us these things uh, called fusion drives, which we can use by getting carborundium and converting that into a fuel that we can put into these hugely efficient e engines. A specific impulse of 15,000. The problem is, getting it because you have to find it and then mine it it's expensive to take with you and this scanner only works if you're an altitude of less than 500 meters so you basically have to be on the planet so it's not easy we're not gonna be relying on that all that much but nukes are nukes nukes be handy advanced metal works we've got some adapters we've got some winches from Kerbal attachment system uh, so do you have a pool of money now? We did. We just, uh, launched some very lucrative missions. We put two satellites into highly elliptical polar orbits without using maneuver nodes because we had not unlocked that. We used those satellites to unlock a bigger VAB so we can build rockets of 255 parts instead of just 30 and use it to unlock the astronaut complex to make it so we can actually exit the vehicle and go on EVAs and explore the moon or space or other things and plant flags and take soil samples and a bunch of science goodness that you generally want to have before you walk on the moon. You can do it without it, but that's like that's landing on the moon and then just leaving science behind. And in this custom uh, career mode, I knock the research gains down to 50% because I really wanted to work. But I think we've done enough uh, tricks so that we've more than made up for that. In fact, I almost think that we should have knocked down a little bit farther because we are, I, I think what's going to happen here, I'm going through all of these one by one, um, but really what's going to happen is marketing with radio, yeah, we're going to get that. We're pretty much going to unlock everything in these two tiers just from what we had already saved. So let's see, we're going to unlock that, and that, and then, let's see what we got here, some containers, some more structural elements, a bunch of good stuff, radial winch, yep, we're going to get that, a uh, camera, we have not messed around at all with the cameras, we should fix that when we go to the moon, another probe core, what is this? Command R, pick those zoom, another camera. I think it's a long range camera. 
ion propulsion. Kind of looks like a flux capacitor upside down. Yes, this game has expanded uh, recently. Well, the research tree has been there for a while, but the latest uh, update, which went from 0.25 to 9, 0.9, which is their official uh, exit from alpha and entry into beta, so they call the update better... Uh, oh, beta than ever. Although a lot of people were calling it on the forums of... Uh, beta late than never but it added a bunch of things uh, namely uh, buildings are now upgradable so the buildings you had before those are the fully upgraded versions of what you had you have to start at the bottom you start with a shack uh, basically you, start, you basically start with a shack and a bunch of dirt one second uh, and that's what you gotta launch your rockets from. You gotta work your way up, and a lot of these buildings are expensive, which is why we had to go and do two uh, lucrative science uh, expeditions to get us a bunch of money back. That got us like a million funds back, and we immediately dumped that into the VAB and the astronaut complex. And then we found another mission, which got us a cool million by itself. It was really one of the easier missions. We did, well, all we had to do is take this engine, which by itself could get us in the orbit, test an orbit, come back. I feel like it was cheating. It was so simple. And we used that to unlock the, uh, the next step in the research and science center. And we're going to need to do it again because we're going to unlock this unlock some landing parts and some wheels and some unmanned tech so we started off with 6500 science just from what we had saved up and not been able to spend we unlocked two more tiers in our tree by upgrading the facility and we still have 1500 1600 left over so I cut the science bonus down by 50%, but clearly, science is not the most limiting factor. It's money, because you need to upgrade this thing again. And the next, the next upgrade is almost 5 million. That's expensive. Kerbal EV said, oh, we can't even collect surface samples until we upgrade this. Research transfer. We can't transfer... Oh, no, we can't. Okay, that's what we can do now. Whew, okay. That's our current level. So we can collect surface samples now, and we can do resource transfers now. Okay, that's good. Almost hey, gave me a heart attack. So the next upgrade, all that does is unlock the rest of the tree. Oh, another a neat feature is the upgradable buildings. They visually have a... Uh, they The buildings visually upgrade too. So I upgraded the tracking center and the middle stage is uh, like a, an under construction large one. The science facility was only a couple of buildings. Now it's starting to sprawl out. Uh, the astronaut complex has gotten a little bit bigger. The uh, mission control has gained a new radar, gotten a little bit better. This starts out as a hole in the ground basically and a like a two-person bunker. Uh, the runway we still have not upgraded. It is a dirt track. This is basically as comprehensive as your local town uh, airport that lands like single props. Like Cessnas or Pipers or something like that. Uh, what does it take to upgrade that? 135. Okay. So the original VAB limits you to 30 parts. We're now up to 255. Uh, the launch pad limited us to 18 tons. We're now up to 30, oh, 140, rather. And, yeah, so and the runway is still at 18, because we have not upgraded that yet. Uh, so that is a long die try where we stand right now. We want to get to building stations and bases with the mods that we have installed. Um, 
but we should figure out where we're going to do next. We have almost 700k left in the bank. What do we have for missions? We still need to land on the moon. Oh. Do you know what? Let's do this really quick. Let's go rescue Sonfield because I feel guilty about leaving him up there. Yeah, let's do that. And we just unlocked a bunch of new parts that's going to make that easy. We don't need to do this, generally speaking, but it still is money. And I feel guilty about leaving him up there. We skipped him over just to test an engine. Meanwhile, he's like, doo doo doo. Anytime, guys. You installed life support. This suit doesn't last forever. Oh, yeah. Speaking of which, yes, because we have life support, now you have life support in your suit. You have a limited amount of oxygen and food and electricity to keep everything running in that suit. So, he's got some time left, but since we accepted the mission, we are officially on a timer. Okay, so we've unlocked more stuff, which is pushing our parachutes further down the tree. Uh, so we'll get our basic setup here. Oh, we should get our larger stack separator because we. Oh, that's the smaller one. Where's our larger one? Is that it? Is that our only one? There we go. Let's see. We just need to get it into a basic orbit. That being said, we should start putting RCS on here. There's a couple of things we need to keep in mind. Uh, for this stage, we will, I think, just use a skipper. No, we want a poodle for this one. It's a little bit more... Yeah, that's what we're going to need. For a skipper, our, our uh, kicker stage, that's just fine. Um, first of all, let's, uh, Bill needs some experience, so Bob, you can sit out for this one. Jeb, you can take Bill along for the ride. I just want to do that before I forget. And let's take the mono out, because we are using this command pod to make room for the, the, uh, Kerbonaut that we're adding. Uh, but it is a heavier pad, uh, pod, so we want to conserve weight while we can. Because weight means more fuel, fuel means more money, etc, etc. Um, let's see. What if we use a skipper here? That's not going to be enough fuel, I'm just trying to get an idea. Mm. That's not quite good enough, is it? see what else can we do here skipper 650 max stress that's not gonna do that's like three of these let's see what we can do something like this could add some solids too put some regular T-30s on like that. I think they should run out of fuel at generally the same time. That looks more like it. I like that. Yeah, I think that should work. Uh, just enough to get us in the orbit. Mm. Probably be cool if we... Let me make one change here. I'm going to take this fuel tank off. I'm going to swap it out for one half its size. Hello for the kids! Welcome and joining us to play some Kerbal Space Program. Wait. You 
left one of your astronaut. No, we did not. But one of the mission types we have is apparently there's someone else left one in orbit, and we have to go rescue him. It's a contract. See, go go rescue him. And you get a little bit of money and a little bit of science for coming to, uh, coming back, and he becomes a part of your program. I specifically didn't leave him there. Probably one of the other administrators. He has probably since been sacked. Um, so what was I doing? I was replacing that big tank with the uh, X216, which is basically the same thing, just half the size. What does that look like? So... We lost a little bit of Delta V from all that, but we gained some thrust to weight. So, if we do something like this... Alright, that is a little bit more like it. But to balance that out, we want to add a couple of tanks on the side boosters as well. That is giving us almost 200 extra Delta V, which is not a huge amount, but you know what? I want a little more in case we need it. So we can rendezvous with, uh, with our Kerbal in orbit without smacking him or flying right by him. I am doing good for the kids. How are you doing? So we're going to slap some parachutes on here, uh, which should help a little bit. I don't think those two parachutes are going to be enough for a full stage recovery. Let's test. It tells us... That's actually not bad. Uh, 7.5 meters a second. I, it averages it out, though, so it doesn't tell you exactly which stage is going to give you which. So let's put some more on there. Going from 3 to 4 doesn't change that a whole lot, which kind of suggests that we were fine with 3. Let's add a couple of more on this stage. Maybe that is the one that needs to go slower. 6.9. Yeah, that looks about right. That's good. Ah, I'm glad you're enjoying the mug. Right now, what is he doing up there? He is chilling. Like a villain. Okay, so let's make sure these are staged right. We eject that one, which activates these chutes, which is correct. And then we activate that engine, and we ditch that one, activate... Oh, they actually got it right. So, let's do some more things. Uh, one problem that we tend to have is if we're trying to rescue a Kerbal on the dark side of the planet, because it is almost completely pitch black. So, we've got the giant lights that comes in stock KSP, but I also installed this mod uh, that adds just three basic uh, small lights. And this is just, it's not going to illuminate like a large part of ground beneath you, but it is just enough to illuminate your craft. And for things like space stations, uh, it looks really cool. So let's try that. That, that help. We don't really need the entire thing lit up, we just want to have enough for the, uh, if we have to maneuver our Kerbal in orbit up to the, uh, the pod, so he's not working in complete darkness. That looks good. make this one a little bit greener so he knows you can kind of tell more to at a glance 
which side has the uh, the door. That shouldn't be much of a problem. We'll turn these off. That's good enough. Good enough. Kerbal Space Program is being very... Well, actually, it's behaving quite well so far today. Last stream, we had some pretty humorous oops, some of which was my fault, some of which was the game fault. Nothing breaking, just amusing. Uh, another thing I wanted to add... Actually, you know, this is good. I was going to add some RCS. Um, but we shouldn't need it for that. We'll just use the uh, the mono in uh, in this in the purple suit. What was his name again? Sonfil. We will add some structural stabilizers. We'll bring the height down just a tad. Okay, our delta V is good. This is this is ideal, really. Uh, 1.73 thrust to weight on the main stage. 1.38 on the kicker. Just over 2,500 delta V. Oh, that is just that is butter. I almost want to save this. We're gonna save this as basic orbiter mark two. Um, because this is just a really simple design. And it works. It's pretty much perfect to get in the low orbit and nothing else. It doesn't, it's not going to carry cargo the way it is now, but it's a good reference point. Alright. Uh, check again to make sure we have the right crew. We took Bob out to make room for the new one. Why doesn't your ship look like a bat wing? Because this is... Wait. Just wait before we get into that stuff. We still need to get money. Um, I mean, we just unlocked a bunch of really good stuff uh, with a lot of money, and that's great. But that just makes it so we have bigger things to unlock. So this, the uh, research facility that we just upgraded was somewhere where three quarters of a million funds to be able to unlock those two tiers of tech. The next is 4.75 million, which is three times as much as our largest amount in the bank so far. So we got a ways to go for that. Uh, we're going to throw it all the way up because we got our thrust to weight pretty much perfect. SAS on. F5 for safety and 321 space. I demand space helicopters. Whatever not, we actually have props. Prop motors for some of these. And I do want to get in the VTOL. It's just the, uh, the specialized when you're on a career mode where every launch costs you money, depending on the complexity of the ship. You want to build up some money first. And that money I want to put towards making some stations and some planetary mining bases first. We're going to take advantage of the uh, Umbra Space Industries mods to try to turn this game into something of a you know, resource management game a little bit, and we can get money back that way. So not only are stations and bases fun toys to have, they are toys that pay for themselves, which are the best sort of toys. Space helicopters. That's, it's something we can do. I'm not saying we're not going to do it. I'm just saying I want a space station first. So we can do some science. Alright, we are at 10,000 meters. We're going to dip towards 45 degrees. We're going to park it there for a little while. Oh, we should check 
where oh shoot oh ah, uh, I messed it up hold on there's something very critical I forgot to do and if you can name it you get extra points two things we should have checked before trying to put this in the orbit one what is Sonfil's altitude? He has... he's at about 100k. 100k, roughly circular orbit. But why are we launching now when he is halfway on the other side of the planet? See the preceding lights. So what we are going to do is we are going to let him come to us. Here he comes, right here, and we are going to stop right about when he hits the desert here. And stop. So, hopefully, when we launch, by the time we get into the proper altitude, he will pretty much meet us. I did not forget to put pilots in the cockpit. There's Bill and Jeb right there. What keeps a space rocket flying straight? Well, uh, a lot of these rockets have what you call gimbling. These rockets don't. These do. Which means it constantly... It's got a little bit of play on where the, the nozzle points. So it's going to try to point you. If you're trying to steer, it'll help you steer. If it's trying to keep you stable, it'll help that way. And, well, we need to launch first, so let's do that before we're getting further. Three, two, one, space. Pods and reaction wheels have torque as well, which help you control, you know, going straight up and down, or turning, or rotating. And reaction wheels are essentially just weighted flywheels in your cardinal axis. And if you want to spin in a certain direction, you use electricity and you start spinning this weighted flywheel. And because every action has an equal and opposite reaction, as you spin the flywheel one way, it torques the spacecraft the other way. Uh, and we tend to rely on that a little bit more in KSP than we do in real life. In real life, we have, you know, they're more the use of monopropellant and reaction control thrusters and stuff like that to get things pointed. And beyond that, you know, aerodynamics. That always helps too. Is that how is it? Uh, space rockets? Uh, yes. They do. Not all they, not all rockets have reaction wheels. I think the smaller ones do, however. In real life, I could be wrong. I think once you get up as to a certain size rocket, they switch to using uh, reaction control thrusters instead of that. I think it's more reliable. I'm not sure of the exact size. Oh, do you know what? I thought these would burn out at the same time. They didn't. That's okay. We're out of the soup. The uh, skipper has uh, a good amount of thrust on its own. We're going to let that run out. And basically going to eject this right as we hit 50k on the Apo, which is perfect. There we go. Let that go. And we're going to continue to burn. Whoa! Whoopsie. It's okay. It's just the fairing. The expensive part should still be there. At 50k, we're going to arc it down. Where is... Sun oh, this is this is looking good. We're going to try to get this at about 90k. Uh, Apo here. Putting us into a nice arc. This is kind of ideal. Yeah, it's putting us to a night, nice, so we're getting a nice steady burn here, so when we go to circularize, it's not going to take that much more delta V. So 
if that's in short. That was just the fairing that was around here. It didn't, yeah. So that part was just the, the casing. The important bits are unscathed. I'm going to continuously, gradually point us down, get us into that. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Here we get this to about 90. What's he at now? Actually, I'm going to cut it here. Oh, he's at 92 now, so he has he's actually come down on his orbit. He was at 100k down here. He's going to be about 90 here, um, which is about perfect. So let's set him as the target. Intersection 7.5. What happens if we throttle up just a little bit? That is getting closer. Yes, it is. Oh, okay. So we... I started to th keep throttling and it started to separate again. So that is as close as that's going to get. Let's see. We are going to be just behind him, it looks like. That's okay. We're going to F5 right here. And just to show you what the, it looks like with the lights on, in case we don't need to use them. There we go. Something I wish the stock parts had, but they don't. They do have the lights, but they're huge and ungangly and not meant for self-illumination. This is just a basic way of using the tube, so I like that. It's good. Yeah, half the parts. <laughs> Do you read the description on some of these parts? It's like, engine found on the side of the road. Okay. There is Sonfell. He is coming up behind us. We'll switch us back over to target mode. So, this is pointing... Retro. So this is perfect. He's coming up fast behind us. He's gonna try to overtake us at around here. But instead... Okay. So, this... Oh, we'll turn this on, too. This pink circle is the direction of where we are. This green, or this is obviously our, our direction in relation to Sonfell, our target here, and this is where we're pointing. So as we get closer, I'm going to start burning here. I've made a straight line between where I'm pointing, our direction, our vector, and his location. And by burning here, I am pushing the green circle right... almost perfect. So what this means, because my direction is almost matched up with him, I am moving straight towards him. Or he is moving straight towards me, which is perfect. So, as he is getting closer, we still need to bleed off some speed. And here's where turning Dorsal's side up makes it easier to get the controls. So we're kind of up on 2.5, let's burn off some more speed. Here's our relative speed down here. We want that to be low when we meet up. We just entered orbit because he is in orbit and we are matching our trajectory with his. So in matching our orbit to his, it just naturally put us into orbit as well. Still can up a little fast. We're underneath a kilometer. Let's burn this down to about 20. Bam, okay, we're perfectly aligned here. So we are moving straight towards each other. So now we just gotta line it up. All right, let's kill this completely now. We don't wanna let him get too close. We don't wanna let him get toasted by the engines. 2.1 meters a second, but we're now we're moving away. Watch yourselves back just a bit. There we go. Now we're moving at each other at 1.9 meters a second. 
We're just gonna let them catch up here a little bit. Yes, that is the first big step. I, I um, another stream streamer that you want to look at, uh, Dos Valdez. He runs uh, Kerbal Space Academy, and if you need to learn the basics about uh, Kerbal Space Program, he is the man to talk to. He will show you everything from uh, how to get into a basic low, how to design your rocket into getting into a low Kerbal orbit, how to get to the moon, how to do rendezvous just like this. Um, he is he is great he, because part of what he does, his part-time job, is teaching. Uh, children about science and stuff like this, so he is well suited for it. And what I'm doing here is mostly part of stock, except for the the HUD display I have here. Although you can do it from the uh, nav ball too. You don't have to have the HUD display up here like this. It just makes it easier. Um, I'm I looked. Uh, I'm integrating some of the, more of the popular mods in here and featuring those instead, instead of trying to rehash what what Dawes does very excellently already. Uh, but he streams most weekend, uh, most weekdays, a little bit on the weekends too. So look him up, Dos underscore Valdez. Okay, we are under 100k, one meter second, and now we're entering the lights, uh, the dark side. So of the planet. So we're going to turn on our lights. We're going to basically kill our velocity. Oop, we're a little bit too far, but that's okay. I wanted to point towards him so the part where the lights is facing him. Okay, so we're just inching towards each other. Turn that off, and we are close enough to switch to Sonfell. And Chatter is giving us the nice little breathing, a little bit of a Vader effect. And we're still on enough of the light side, and we're high enough so the sun's still hitting us. So we didn't strictly need the lights, but I've wished I've had them more than once. We'll turn on this little dude's RCS, which just drastically changed his velocity. Woo! Alright, and we're going to start burning towards him. Oh, he's getting away. Oh, that's not good. What, what, what's going on? He's burning backwards. He's burning backwards constantly. I don't know what's doing that. That's not right. Crap, we are losing... We are losing this guy. We need to catch back up. Alright. His RCS pack is doing something funky, and I'm not sure... Oh, I might know what it is. Maybe. Okay, let's... How much... We got plenty of Delta V. We don't have to worry about that. So let's get back up close. I have a feeling. One second. No, it's not that. I don't know why his RCS pack was burning backwards. Is Jeb still alive? Yes, he is. In fact, he is the pilot on this mission. Okay. So again, now we're building prograde, so instead of pushing, we're pulling the ball. Uh-oh. Okay, so at this, we're going to re-enter the atmosphere, which isn't good. So we just got to make sure we grab him before then. Now we're getting a little bit fast. We're going to kill velocity again. So now I'm definitely glad I brought the lights because we are officially on the dark side of the planet. Oh, 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 wrong way, wrong way. There we go. That's better. So we want to keep the green circle over the pink one. We're still coming in a little bit fast. There we go, 
F5 here for safety. All right. So his RCS is off. Alright, so where yeah, is the ship? See about how this is harder? Oh, it's right there. Hold on. Oh. Let me turn this around real quick and then switch back so we can actually see the lights. There we go. Uh, why is this RCS pack doing that? I don't want you to do that. This is not how I taught you. No, 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 no. No! I don't know what's going on. Okay. Now we're going to point this way. So his RCX pack, for some reason, is stuck on. I don't know what this... This isn't right. Yeah, no, no. Something's not right here. Maybe it's part of the controls. Uh, we can't change that in the middle of a mission, can we? Hmm. Uh, the only thing I could think of... Oh, I do have a joystick attached with a throttle. Oh, maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. I think... Alright, I'm going to do a test here. There we go. Okay, yeah, I think, so I've got a joystick <laughs> that I've got plugged in, in the back here, and uh, I wasn't using it, but I think one of the sliders that is only specific for RCS was stuck in the reverse system, uh, direction, and I forgot I even had it plugged in. So what we're going to do, we are going to load the quick save here, which was just a little while ago. Uh, we're going to point this back over to him so he can see our lights. And now, when I flip on the RCS... There we go. Yes, will he make it down? Oh, we are... High time for a quick station break here, too. Okay, this is much better. This is how it's supposed to go. Just gently gliding them in. These lights are working wonders. There's the green light. That's where I know where the hatch is. <laughs> What's our relative velocity? It's over 9,000! Sorry. Not sorry. Lights are on. Gently gliding him in. And we're going to get the EVA report because this is the first time we've been able to do EVAs. There we go. Coming in. And... Crap. Doesn't that green light look really weird like that? Board! Yay! Sunfill, safe on board. Alright. Got that part over. We have... We've got a ton of fuel. So, we are going to set up a maneuver node. We're going to again try to put us pretty much right down on the KSC. Uh, that's actually too much fuel. 
So we've got in precise node here. I mean, you can also see it right here. Uh, engineer is telling us with the fuel in the tank in a vacuum, we've got 650 delta V left. Uh, so we'll set up this maneuver node to be pretty much around there because we don't have too much fuel in the tank when we land. Our parachutes uh, are assuming that we have very little or no fuel left. So let's not disappoint them. Alright, so there is a retro burn that pretty much uses up all of our fuel. And... Oh shoot. Oh crap. We're not getting an atmospheric entry because we're already on a suborbital uh, sub uh, yeah, trajectory. Uh, so right now we want to burn Perry. Get us out of the soup a little bit. Oh, and who do we got here? Uh, when's this update? Come on, Twitch update. There we go, EJA Peregrine. Welcome to the ranks of the robot overlords. Your efforts will be noted. Okay, so we're going to dip into the atmosphere a little bit, but that's okay. We're only going in to 63k. It's not going to slow us down that much. I mean, we want to re-enter anyways. We are just looking to re-enter when we want to. So, we are going to set up a new maneuver node. Uh, we spent a little bit of delta V there, uh, but only a little. So, we... Oop! Oop! Too much. So, we're about 810. And it's still going to be a jerk about that, because we are still technically in the atmosphere. Here's what we're going to do, real quick. We are going to burn radial straight away from the planet. And I'm only doing this so I can get out of the atmosphere. And that's pulling in the APO, too. It's, it's just pulling in this direction. Okay, there we go. I'm only doing that so that now that we have this maneuver node, it's going to give us the atmospheric entry here. Because we're already in the atmospheric range here, uh, this was only showing us what that plan was going to do. So in order to reset it for landing at the KSC, I had to get out of the atmosphere so I can better get back in it, if that makes sense. <laughs> Yes, I said your name, EGA Peregrine. I live to serve. Not you per se, but, you know, serving in general. The least I could do for uh, have you following channel is to give you that little bit of social recognition. You deserve it. So, we are going to set up a quick alarm and Kerbal uh, alarm clock mostly because it's basically foolproof so that you don't overshoot. We are going to land Sanfo. Okay. Oh, here's a good... So as I'm time warping, you can kind of see the planet is rotating and the red cross here is getting closer to our path because it's rotating with the planet. So by the time we get over here, we're almost on top of it and that cross is not that much different anymore. So you want to aim that cross where you want to land. Thank you, alarm clock. We are going to get you... Get out of map view because this is prettier looking. Point it towards the maneuver. And we still have 27 seconds, so a little bit of time warp. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, three, two, one. Okay. There we go. Back under suborbital trajectory. We're gonna be coming in a little bit hot here, but I don't have deadly reentry installed on this playthrough. And uh, currently, Kerbal's atmosphere is pretty forgiving. 
I'm sure that will change before too long. A little bit more. There we go. Okay, so we have spent pretty much almost all the fuel there is close enough. We no longer need this stage. And we generally want it to be pretty far away from us for when we land, so we're going to separate the stage now. Uh, it's got its parachutes, it's going to activate. Uh, if it does get out of outside of physics range, uh, stage recovery will then handle it from there, but I'm pretty sure this is going to land close to us so that it'll still be within 2.5 kilometers or whatever it is. And that will work equally as well. We're still above the soup. So we're going to land this, we're going to get sound, sound filling, we're going to have... What time is it? We're going to... Oh, we'll probably end the stream there, actually. Um, I would leave to keep going, but uh, my sleep schedule has been wrecked since Christmas vacation. I'm trying to get it back into something more uh, normal, quote unquote. Also, I want to give me a little bit of time to uh, edit the videos because uh, one thing I haven't mentioned yet today, I've got a new YouTube channel. The link is in the description below. Um, it doesn't have a fancy uh, custom one yet because you have to have at least 500 subscribers. Right now, all there is in there was the uh, the cast from earlier Saturday. Uh, so if you want to catch up, if this is the first time you've uh, seen the stream, again, welcome to the stream, uh, first and foremost. And secondly, uh, if you want to see what got us to this far, setting uh, the thing up and you know a couple of explosions, you can go on the YouTube and you can check out the archives if you so wish. Didn't miss much. Uh, I don't know when you came out, but uh, we are actually not time warped. This is how fast we're coming in, because we did burn a lot of fuel. There's our rocket stage. Oh, it did... Okay, so it did wind up going out of physics range, but as we'll say here... Stage recovered. Oh, that is... Uh, no, that's it. 61.5% distance. We were on top of it. Or is that from earlier? Obwan is now following the new robot overlords. Thank you for joining the ranks. Your efforts will be noted. Uh, let's see. I'm pretty sure you were not my dad. I know my dad. You were no my dad. Actually, you could be, but I'd be very surprised. Uh, so it did get, I don't know why it gave us a bad distance bonus, but it landed just fine. That is just the f fairing from the decoupler. That's going to hit the water and go sploosh. Don't really care. That's not really officially the stage. It's debris no matter how you cut it. Pop the chute. By the way, if you haven't seen it, the, um... Oh, it's not going to go sploosh. It's going to go splat. If you, uh, there is video of basically the Orion capsule test from last month, uh, complete re-entry back on the Earth. And if you haven't seen it, it is fascinating. It even shows a camera pointing back, backwards, as the plasma flume reconnects out the back. And that's trippy in itself. But just to give you an idea of how thin the Earth's atmosphere really is, you're in it and then... The actual re-entry process takes minutes. Only that. And it doesn't take long here, and this is one-sixth of the scale of Earth, Kerbin is. Uh, and just seeing, like, how low it gets before it pops the main chutes. Um, Gabraham here, my brother, we went skydiving uh, back in September. Um, and we went up to an altitude of about 14,000 feet, and I could see down below the cloud covers from the, e the outside of the plane. Uh, and the Orion capsule popped its main chutes 
at a lower altitude than we jumped out of the plane ourselves with a t-shirt and shorts. So that gives you an idea of just how thin the atmosphere really is in real life. Fascinating. Look it up on YouTube. You won't regret it. Okay, so we have landed Sonfell. Uh, we will... No, we won't do that. We'll recover the vessel to complete the mission. She gave us 50k. Not a huge amount compared to what we got, but not every mission is going to be like a monster. So we did get a little bit of science from the EVA. That's fun. A little bit more recovered funds. Jebediah. Bill! We've got him up to level 1. That's great. We'll, and Sonfeld, just from getting into the craft, gained another experience. So that's also great. We'll work on Bob a little bit next. Here we go. Some of this, some of this, and some of that. Uh, love it. So, let's take another look here. Build an orbital science station. <sighs> what do we got here? We got quite a bit, actually. We got some money. Temperature scans, curving, surface. So, next stream, we have two major goals right now. One is getting to the moon. I think we're going to do that next. I think we're going to get a lander on the moon, get some science, come back, just one, and then we're going to get building our very first orbital station. Not a small one, we're going to make one that is self-sufficient, or at least close to it. It's going to handle some science from uh, orbital science mod, uh, we're going to use some tech life support. Uh, we're going to use a lot of uh, modular colonization system. We're going to dive into... We're, we're starting to get into the real mod-heavy part. So a lot of the fun stuff. It's going to take more than one launch to get everything set. Uh, and we can even also use it as a refueling station for some of our longer launches. So uh, next stream, I think... I think, uh, I think tomorrow night will be the next stream. I was going to do Monday, Wednesday this week, but again, didn't get around to it yesterday because I had a face uh, pumped full of painkillers from the dentist office. And it's kind of hard to talk when your lip is like this. And no one wants to see me drooling on air. Wasn't that bad. So... Uh, Piv, at least you, guess you have no links turned on. Hold on, let me try this. I had issues doing this Saturday. Uh, it might take a, a couple of minutes, but I'll be on the stream for a little bit longer. So we had a pretty good day today. Uh, yes, today we have collected vital data f to further our mission of the new robot overlords. Uh, data such as getting more satellites into orbit without having to use maneuver nodes and more comically large engines compared to the capsules that we are using and uh, <laughs> troubleshooting uh, faulty RCS packs on wayward Kerbals. Uh, but now it's time for this overlord to plan our next move. So until our next mission, this is Tybot3000 signing off and logging out.